Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. In my last video, I talked about our prostate gland. If you have not seen that video, then click on the button and watch the video now. Today, I'm going to talk about our last part of the genital system, which is oftenly represented by banana or cucumber or radish or carrot or oftenly name as dick. So, it is our penis, which commonly serves the purpose of our urinary system also the reproductive system combinedly okay now as you can see in this photo our penis has three part one is root body and extended part or the free portion okay the root is present inside of the deep pelvic cavity mainly at our superficial perineal pouch okay the root has three part one is two crura and one bulb one crura right side another crura left side and in the middle the bulb part okay the bulb and this crura attaches with both sided pelvic arch i mean inside inside margin of the pelvic arch okay and the bulb is attaches with family with our perineal membrane now both crura of each side are covered by ischiocavernosus group of tissue okay and the bulb is covered by bulbospongiosus tissue now the body part see the body is continuation of our root okay so as i said right side and left side has crura okay and with each crura is covered by ischiocavernosus so the right sided crura continues as right sided corpora cavernosum muscle and the left sided crura continues forward as left sided corpora cavernosum muscle okay and the middle point which was bulb covered by bulbus spongiosus it continues as corpus spongiosum muscle okay now here is the thing each corpora cavernosa do not reach at the end point of the penis it merges at the glans penis okay or the corona glandis position and the corpus spongiosum it goes forward and 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 gives a conical projection as a snake head like appearance so this conical projection is known as our head of penis or glands of penis okay it's known as glands okay now as in my earlier video of testes i said that tunica albuginea which is a part of our testes and this tunica albuginea layer goes outside of the scrotum and enters into the penis up to the corona glandis now also at this point I told you in my urethra part of video that it has bulbar part of urethra and pendular part of urethra okay so at the membranous point of the bulb where the bulb is present at the upper surface of the bulb it is pierced by the urethra and at the center point and it bends forward along with the bulbospongiosus group of tissue and when this continues as a corpus spongiosum this urethra pierces the entire corpus spongiosum up to the urethral meatus at the center point okay urethra presents inside of the corpus spongiosum muscle now as you can see in this photo our penis has two kind of phase in one phase it is normal non excited and small and second is erectile or excited and enlarged phase okay now in flaccid position or non excited position or in normal position our penis is small and it has two surface anterior surface posterior surface that's it and in excited position or in erectile position it has two surface superior surface inferior surface that's it now as i said the body is covered by a thin layer of skin along with the skin it is also covered by two layers of fascia number 1 superficial fascia of colis and the deep fascia of bux so one is colis fascia and another is bux fascia that's it that's all the point you have to know at the level of mbbs okay now one extra knowledge point for you is the few suspensory ligaments originates from the symphysis pubis and our linea alba gives a fundiform ligament the continuation part of the linea alba gives a fundiform ligament both ligament holds our penis now the blood supply in blood supply you will get arterial supply and venous veins first of all arterial supply you will get three major artery of our penis 
first of all our deep penile artery now right side and left side right deep penile artery left deep penile artery both artery gets uh, gives supply our corpora cavernosa muscle okay inside the corpora cavernosa muscle this artery uh, changes or shifts into spiral form okay it's spiral form we call it helicine artery or helicine artery it's a helix shape okay so helicine arteries okay so this artery covers the entire length of cavernous muscle right side left side same to same now next point is our dorsal penile artery it supplies mainly our corpus conjusum muscle okay it doesn't go uh, spiral form or helix shape it's a straight and gives multiple branches and at the bulb position it gets supplies by bulbar arteries also it gets supplies by few branches from external pudendal artery in venous drainage you will get our dorsal penile vein deep penile vein superficial penile vein all these veins forms a venular network and it gives drains into our external pudendal vein at the bulb point it gets drained by prostatic venous plexus that's it now the nerve supply of our pain is it has mainly four type of nerve supply one is sensory motor sympathetic parasympathetic along with the autonomic okay in sensory kind you will get supplied by dorsal nerve of the penis along with the iliunguinal nerve gone in motor part you will get supplied by the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve gone sympathetic parasympathetic commonly supplied by the sacral plexus of s2 s3 s4 gone and the autonomic part it also supplied by the few branches of pudendal nerve that's it so i hope you little bit understood about this video anyway in our next video i will start our female reproductive system okay till then bye